So let's face it, having a Shiva background, there's only a handful of things that you're ready to do, like work at BNH, insurance, and of course, real estate. So that's why I thought big. I found the biggest brokerage in the world and went straight to the top to the chairman and asked if we could pick his brain, try to get some gems that, that we can actually use. How am I gonna find him? How you doing? Steven's right here. Hey, how are you? Hey, hey, good to see you. How you been? Thank God, thank God. Thank God is right. So, Steven, you are the leader of the largest brokerage in the world. The president I even found on Google calls you the Best broker he ever met. I, I'm making out a living. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with your first job. I worked in a mailroom. Well, my first job, I delivered leaflets when I was 11 years old for something that doesn't exist anymore, the World Book, which was a competitor for the Encyclopedia Britannica. And they were very well received. It was like Google, <laughs> well, we Google stuffed them under the door. I lived in the Bronx. I stuffed them under the doors. and. And then I worked uh, almost full time from the time I was 13 till 15 and I packed newspapers, worked after school all day Saturday. And when I graduated high school, I was, then he went to Cushman Wakefield. And he called me when I was, I guess, 17. He said, there's a job in the accounting department there. Um, and it was 30% more than I was making. I don't want to give you the numbers, they're embarrassing. Uh, but full time, would you be willing to interview? I interviewed. Got the job at CNW, spent 26 years there, ended up CEO and chairman. Do you feel like, when you look in the mirror, do you feel like, I made it? Now when I look in the mirror, I look, think I'm getting old. <laughs> I say, no, I don't think about making it. I never thought about having to make it. I grew up in a, in a home in, a, in an economic environment where my father taught us that you had three responsibilities. And I was, Put a roof over your family's head, put food on the table, put clothes on their back, and I don't care how many jobs you have to do in a given week. To do that, that's your responsibility. So ours was just go out there, make a living, figure out how to do it. Wow. What's the uh, attitude of someone that is successful? You just need to want to be, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be. I think, you know, they call it drive, they call it ambition. So you really have to pursue your dream. I know it sounds simple, but that really is the truth. How are the Hasidic people you deal with in real estate? Well, some of my partners are beyond brilliant. I mean, they could sit in a room and talk about a particular acquisition and sitting there without touching a piece of paper or calculator, uh, one or more of them, there's three particular partners will go, mm, I think we make an offer at this, this is what it's worth, and this is why it's worth that. So you've seen a like Hasidic uh, s success in real estate. Absolutely. Significant. Do you think that there should be uh, more secular education in the, the Hasidic world? I think a lot of things, but their tradition probably doesn't, wouldn't be receptive to it. So practically, if somebody, he's a man of the book, and he wants to get a job, what should be his next step? Knock on the door. Say, I want to come in. I'm not worried about what you pay me. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to work hard. I want to learn. Look into it. Uh, educate yourself. Learn something about business. Third tip. Whatever you do, you got to work hard. There are no hours in the day. You stay up till 4 in the morning. If you have to work 20 hours a day and sleep 4, that's what you got to do. And the big picture, what would you say for yourself brings you meaning in life? Meaning in life for me is being a successful father, being involved in the community outside of business, giving back. Uh, I would like to be a better golfer, but that's out of the question. Uh, <laughs> your, your relationship with your wife is amazing. How are you married to her and your work at the same time? She's been an amazing partner, tolerated, you know, years of being a CEO, traveling an average of three days a week. Uh, going to, I can't tell you how many black tie fundraisers where she was better than just a spouse in attendance. She just captivated the room and she walked in and was like, she made me better. So she was part of it. What can money not buy? 
Money can't buy happiness. Unfortunately, money cannot buy health. Did you buy a billion dollar lottery ticket? No, I did not. My son offered to sell me 50 of his the day after the drawing. <laughs> I swear to God, it's true. If you did win the uh, lottery, would you still be working here? No. No. There is a limit to, I would be doing amazing things. I have an idea for what money people should do with their money. And I actually wrote it to Gates and you know Buffett and whatnot, but they should build a business, give people jobs. That's what I would do with the money. Well, in the Talmud it says the ultimate form of charity is to get someone a job. That's what I would do. I would create businesses without regard for my personal gain or profit, but the profit would be the people walking out of there with a check on the, at the end of the week and putting food on their children's table and taking care of their families. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you so thank much you. for taking your time out of your busy day. Thank you. Thanks for coming on Schmooze. Nice to see you again. Schmooze.live Follow us, subscribe, and share.